Good morning. I'm positively giddy this morning. <laughs> and there are three reasons. One is a perfect morning. I'm in the shade now because I'm going through the trees, but it's glorious. It's um, BBC tells me it's 17 degrees, um, but it's just so comfortable. It's fresh. The sun is shining. It's, it's an absolutely perfect morning. Um, second reason, I just started annual leave today. So I've got a week and a bit off of work. I am going to spend a lot of that on the plot and in the garden. Um, but the third reason, perhaps the most important, is today I'm off to Gardener's World Live. So in preparation for um, today, I've been up really early. I baked some bread, watered the whole garden and um, washed my hair. <laughs> and now I'm out early with the dog. Um, it's about half past seven and um, giving her a good walk and then dropping off with Mark who is dog sitting for the day um, because I'm taking my usual dog sitter with me which is my mom so I'm taking my mom um, for a belated Mother's Day present I'm taking my aunt who it's her 70th this year so this is her birthday present and I'm taking my cousin it's also a belated birthday present for her um, seems like a pretty good deal <laughs> covers all of those um, occasions with one fell swoop so I've never been to Gardeners World Life before um, in fact I only went to my first ever garden show last year and um, last autumn which was the um, Malvern autumn show um, I went to that one with um, Liam and his dad um, and bless him Liam was really good <laughs> I sat through all the talks and um, let me wander around and uh, look at all the plants. Um, not really his thing. And um, uh, actually, it was funny afterwards. We saw Ari Anderson on TV and um, he's like, oh, I know her. And I'm like, yeah, we, we saw her talk at, at um, the Malvern show. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, this is a new experience for me. It also is for my mum and my aunt and my cousin. They've never been before. And we're just really looking forward to a day out together and uh, to enjoy ourselves, see lots of plants, look at some gardens. They didn't really have gardens at the Melbourne show, so I've never really seen a show garden before. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm going to take you along with me. So uh, let's go check out Gardeners World Live. Good morning. 
Now, it was my intention um, to come down here yesterday after the show and share my um, review of Gardener's World Live um, while it was still fresh in my mind, have a water, have a chat, um, and then try and get the video uploaded for this morning, Saturday morning. Um, but we did not leave the show until after 7 p.m. So we were there, we arrived there at 10 a.m. and we didn't leave till 7 p.m. Granted, the last hour was in the pub, um, but, um, but that was a long day. That was a long, full on day. Um, I don't think I've ever spent that long looking at plants. Um, and by the time we drove home and I dropped off all the people and um, picked up Dory, That's all right, she's behind me. Um, picked up Dory, got home, had a bite to eat. Um, it was time for bed. <laughs> Didn't even have time to watch Gardener's World um, before bed. So um, uh, as always, I'm awake early. So I, I, I watched it this morning um, and uh, I've just um, come down to the park, come by the church, picked up the grass clippings. Um, so they're here. And um, before I go back home, I'll have a little water um, but yes I wanted to come down and um, talk to you about my review of Gardener's World live and I won't bury the lead um, I loved it <laughs> absolutely loved it had a cracking time we all did we all thoroughly enjoyed it um, it was hot um, which made it um, a little uncomfortable and it did get tiring um, but we took some breaks and because part of the show is in the exhibition halls which is much cooler, um, stifling in the floral marquee, which is where some of the talks that we wanted to go to were being held. Um, so my mum and I braved it um, because we really wanted to see Adam. Um, so, so we watched Adam Frost, um, but my um, aunt and my cousin, they were just like, no, it's far too hot. Um, and so, so they missed that one. But while they missed Adam, they went into the um, hall and saw Monty. And mum and I, we didn't even get a glimpse of Monty, so, so we missed Monty, but we saw Adam. Um, who else did we see? Oh, there's a birdie there. I was really pleased to see people that I know from Instagram. So I saw Danny from um, Plot 81, who's been on Gardener's World recently with her allotment. I love her allotment. I love that it, um, well, she's doing that, that food forest approach. Um, but it's also kind of enclosed. She's got the bathtub in there and there was a, a show garden with a bathtub as well. Um, but she's got the bathtub in there, you know, it, it's just, it seems like such an oasis space. Anyway, that's how it comes across, you know. Now I can't quite get that here because we can't have fences um, and I don't know what, to, well, you can't plant trees within so much of the border of your neighbor. So it is a very open site which has its advantages as well, of course, of, of kind of being much more of a sort of community space in that sense. It's the same with um, Katrina at Home Growing Garden. They have those um, allotment plots that are just completely kind of enclosed. Um, and uh, and I, I think it gives it that secret garden, sort of lovely foresty kind of feel to it. Um, but I suppose um, you forfeit some of the interaction then with your, your kind of plot neighbours and things and that, that sense of you're all growing together. Um, anyway, a little aside there. So yeah, so Danny from Plot 81, who I really did want to have a chat with, um, but I didn't quite get in there in time and somebody else was talking to her and we needed to move on to something else. Uh, but she was being interviewed by Lucy Hutchins um, of um, She Grows Veg and um she of course had a, a show garden there as well which was brilliant really great so a whole thing is to grow um edibles as ornamentals and sort of vice versa things that we would ordinarily think of ornamentals showing how they are also edibles for instance dahlias and sunflowers etc and i also learnt um that cornflowers are edible which i i didn't know and and hollyhocks are edible i didn't know that either um I will eat anything if it's, if it's edible. I will. I will try to eat it. Um, oh, hang on. Dory's uh, decided to go two plots down. Gone beyond marks. One sec. Dory. Dory, come sit with me. Come sit here. Come on. Come on. Good girl. I thought she'd um, figured out the dimensions of the plot. As I say, <laughs> can't have fences. So um, yeah, I thought she'd figured out that she's not allowed in gyms. 
but she can go on to Mark's but uh, she decided to go another one down exploring I haven't had a walk yet have we um, uh, what was I saying edibles um, <laughs> you've made me lose my train of thought Dory um, anyway we'll move on we'll move on um, oh uh, the other person I saw was uh, Stephanie Cafferty so she she did a talk um, Danny and Stephanie were both talking on the I think it's let's talk no something stage um, but it was um, just in the midst of the thoroughfare so it was really hard to hear them um, which was a shame they had a microphone but it wasn't really projecting far enough um, and actually with most of the talks you know it was quite tricky to hear because you've got so much ambient noise going on you know and it's nice that the talks are sort of in the thick of everything but um, but yeah it does make it a bit a bit tricky to catch catch everything especially for the moms um, so um, Stephanie Hafferty was obviously talking no dig um, but there were things that she said that were really interesting that I didn't know about um, particularly I mean for me I'm, I'm doing the same thing my broad beans here are covered in uh, black fly and I'm not doing anything about it I'm, there's so many ladybirds in this plot and they're on there I've seen them on there they're having a feast I'm gonna let them deal with it and you know that's what you do you, you leave in the things that the pests that you may not want and the natural predators of those pests will come in but they're also pollinators so it's it's all good it's all part of that biodiversity isn't it um, so but she was saying definitely don't put soapy water over your black fly and things because um, soapy water is indiscriminate and it will kill everything um, all the insects and also contaminate your soil even the most eco-friendly vegan um, what did she say made by angels <laughs> soap um, will do that so my question was well you know we're being encouraged to use grey water when we're in these kind of drought conditions um, as a way of kind of saving water and saving our plants um, but you know which is the worst evil here to like not use that water which it would go to waste anyway or to um, potentially harm some of the insects in the gardens and things um, so I was getting ready to ask that question but actually somebody asked it for me so that was nice um, and she best basically said yeah you've got to decide which is the better of two evils and I really liked her answer which was we're not nothing's perfect <laughs> You know, there's no perfect answer to this. You've kind of got to weigh up. Am I going to lose this plant if I don't water it? Um, is the plant more important? You know, you've got to make kind of those decisions for yourself. And um, I, I've used a lot of grey water in the garden, particularly last year during the drought. I was continually throwing my washing up bowl stuff um, into the garden. Most, you know, I tried to keep it on the ornamentals and not the edibles, but... Um, but yeah, I, I think that probably saved quite a few of my plants. Um, but yeah, what what damage, and especially for me as a vegan, um, what damage was it doing to the insects out there? So that's some, one for me to, th to think about and perhaps um, research a little bit more. So that was Stephanie Hafferty. Um, I think, oh, the other person we saw talk was um, Chris Collins. That's that's right I hadn't come across him before uh, yeah Chris Collins um, who is an organic gardener he's a balcony gardener and allotment gardener and the stuff he was talking about in terms of his allotment was really fascinating um, I mean both he and Stephanie Hafferty actually said a lot of similar things um, one of the things being that um, more than anything you want diversity on your plots or in your gardens you know grow as many things all together as possible um, but what I really like that he said and Stephanie said was about introducing wild flowers and um, ornamentals to attract pollinators onto your plot um, that we think about having these kind of wildlife areas and what Chris was saying was that that's great and all the wildlife will stay in that area because that's where all the things they like are um, so he was talking about, uh, and, and Stephanie too, about using the borders of your plot um, to plant those flowers. So you have a strip of those flowers down your plot instead of in this corner right over here at the back of your plot. 
Um, now, as I was saying, we're not allowed fences or trees at the borders, but we can have flowers. So I spoke to Mark last night and said, I think this is what we need to do in this border area between our plots. Just get loads of, not just um, wildflowers or ornamentals that are good for pollinators, but also um, sacrificial plants. So we'll put brassicas and stuff in there that we've got extras of so that that attracts the butterflies and hopefully keeps them away from the ones that we will also net, but uh, but give them something that they can also um, live on and, um, and breed on. So, um, so I really like that advice. Um, so those were the talks. What I would say um, with going to these shows, and I found this at Malvern as well, if you want to go to the talks, that takes a big chunk out of your day and there is so much to see. Malvern was huge, um, but didn't have show gardens and things. Here, I mean, I could have just sat in those, walked around those show gardens for ages. And that, of course, is the key at Gardeners World Life, is you can go into the show gardens um, and, and into all the structures that are there as well. So there was one that had that this kind of treehouse thing going on. Um, there was another one that had an actual cottage on it. So that was the King's Coronation type garden thing, which I love that garden. Not quite so keen on the royalist agenda behind it, but loved the garden and um the cornflowers were just incredible and so full you know um they were so high and dense and there were cornflowers in there and other wildflowers and um yeah really beautiful like swathes of them and then you've got this cottage and um it's like a tiny house and i love tiny houses watched a lot of tiny house videos on youtube and um and it was really yeah really well done and uh yeah my my mum was very keen on <laughs> on that little um, tiny house. She seemed to think it would fit right at the bottom of my garden where she could perhaps live. <laughs> so um, so my point being there, um, lost my thread again. Was um, so if you go into the talks, um, that takes a big chunk out of the day, and you don't have as much time to look around the gardens and the marquee, and of course all the cellars that are there. Um, I think I really would have liked it over two days <laughs> to be able to go for two days and you you know potentially you could it's not that expensive to go to Gardeners World Live there are deals throughout the year as well leading up to it um, I've seen before you can get it for like a tenner on Groupon just before but um, we weren't going to risk that um, I think I got them at, at Valentine's or Easter they were on a deal and it got 20% off the mum's got concession anyway so I think for the the four, is it? the four of us it was like 60 quid um all in um and of course it's in birmingham which is central um to the country um but also very close to me i mean i was pretty much doing my normal work commute to get there um so it's nice that it's not you know in london basically um and and my other point before that you can actually go into these show gardens and that, i mean a lot of the criticism that i've heard about chelsea is that you're as a um pay and you pay quite a lot for Chelsea as someone who pays to visit you are kept on the fringes you know you're not allowed into the gardens you kind of try to see the garden with other people in front of you I'm talking you know about what I've heard other people say because I haven't been to Chelsea um, but certainly this one you could get right really stuck in and the other thing I would say about Gardeners World Live is that um, after um, sort of half past two three o'clock uh, it really quietens down and so um, if you didn't have the whole day to be there again it's affordable enough that you could go for a half day and if you only want to see the gardens um, yeah go in the afternoon everybody clears out and um, the marquee was so much more um, comfortable and um, in in the afternoon you know that you could properly look around the plants that were for sale and of course the displays um, and um, and not feel stifled in there Let me just check on the dog yeah she's been okay um the marquee then the marquee um was good fun in the afternoon when it was cooler and um we had a lot of fun looking around for plants to buy i'll tell you what we bought at the end um Jurassic plants were there, which I, I really like those. They do really unusual edibles. I bought from them online. They package their stuff brilliantly. Um, I had a conversation with them about their packaging because they were saying it's so time intensive to package the way that they do. Um, so they've got to kind of think about that and they have different size pots and things and how, how do you do that? So um, 
I, my impression was just like, you do that really well. But they were like, actually, it's quite a big problem for us. Um, and the prices as well. So that was, I think we were expecting to go to a show and it would be all marked up for the show. But actually, I think people are um, selling at trade price. So um, it's actually much cheaper than you would buy in the garden centre or online. So for instance, Jurassic Plants, the plant that I wanted and got, um, was I think 16.50 online, but was 12 pound at the show. So that's a, that's a pretty significant kind of saving. Of course, if you go on the Sunday, you have to sell off and um, you can get some real bargains, but you can get bargains at the end of the days anyway. So um, oh, I'll tell you now, the, the moms of my cousin, um, they all wanted Alastromerius, Alstrom, um, which of course I bought the other day. And, um, they, by the end of the day, they were starting to look a bit sad, and um, so yeah, they discounted them. They just, just kind of was like, "Is this all you've got left?" As in, these don't look great. Have you got better ones? And they're like, "Well, you can have that for a five, that kind of thing." So, so um, yeah, deals to be had in in the floral marquee. Um, borders, the borders were beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed that area. Um, so the, obviously they're not as big and grand as, as the show gardens, but I, I thought the borders were really interesting because I've got another one of the criticism of garden shows is that there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of um, sort of uh, short term planting and, um, and materials and things that go into these. So they're very carbon intensive things to create and then they're done. Um, I don't think that's actually the case with a lot of gardens which have another life elsewhere. Um, so we, we spoke, that's the other nice thing of course is the designers are there and you can speak to them. So um, they were telling us kind of where the gardens were going to. But in terms of the borders, you haven't got all of that. So, or as much of that. So all the borders were sort of um, squares of sleepers and you filled in your square and the planting was brilliant. So so vibrant and interesting um and of course you've got little features within them as well um and some really ingenious things which i hope i've picked up and i need to go back and look at and so i remember all of these things like the um the pallet um fencing that you could put the pots in the top so if you get the right size pot they will just slip in the top of the pallets and we know i have an awful lot of pallets how lovely will the compost heaps look if i've got little plants all along the edges and the different ways people did strawberry planters and the different ways people created um areas for wildlife and bug hotels bug hotels were everywhere um yeah really good and um and that's the other thing that we all said as we were walking around hello dory um achievable it felt everything felt like you could do it within your own garden kind of i mean i'm not going to build an enormous treehouse structure or a cottage sorry mum um at the end of the garden um but lots of the things the planting and and even bits like as i'm saying ponds and things like that and bits that you might do with reclaimed materials all of that stuff felt like you could do that in your own garden um now one of the things that adam said in during his talk was about the things that stand out for you in the show that you see a lot of and he said you have to be careful because um sometimes the things that you see a lot of is just because they've had a good season and so people might have wanted other things in their gardens and they have failed and it's a kind of panic at the last minute of like what's doing well what have we got lots of quick cram those into the garden and so you see them all over um so that may be the case so we saw a lot of sambucus of the black lace um elder and um of course that's in flower at this time of year and so it looks good so i can understand why we saw a lot of those in the gardens but yeah i'm i'm really pleased with mine at home and it was nice to see them there as well lots of silver birches as well um so that was interesting um and like multi-stemmed ones um which I think that was a thing at Chelsea that there were like a lot of multi-stem coppice type of um, trees being used. Oh, Dory's decided to go in Mark's greenhouse now. Um, now I have a silver birch because my aunt who came came with us, um, she's been growing them 
So she's been giving away silver birches. Liam's got one in his garden. My cousin's got one. Mom's got one. I've got one. And I was kind of planning to keep in mine in a pot because I'm like, where am I going to put a tree in my already very full and lots of trees in it garden? Um, but I think I will. Hang on. She's off again. One sec. Dory! No. We're back. Um, but yeah, um, seeing it at Chelsea did make me think, actually I might plant it in the garden and, um, and just try and keep it at a reasonable size and maybe... I'll have to look up canyon coppice how do you coppice uh, silver birch but yeah plenty of silver birches i've made notes here about other things that we saw um the other thing um and adam frost mentioned this as one of his highlights of, of the show um was the cornices um there's a cornice called cornice milky way and that was in so many of the gardens and looked great we really liked that um, we didn't see many for sale though um, but um, definitely kind of one to look out for. Um, Campanula, camp a lot of that, a lot of that in, in the gardens, which is not something I have in the garden. Um, borage, I loved seeing how much borage was just kind of poking out of different borders and things like that. So that was really being used um, extensively. So that was interesting. Um, borage is, is in my garden. I've, I've planted more borage. I don't find it the most attractive looking plant. The um, flowers are beautiful, of course, but the foliage itself, it kind of droopy and a bit weedy looking. And yeah, I think it needs to grow on me a little bit more, but I, I plant lots of it and I like it because it's good for pollinators and it's an edible sea hollies lots of sea hollies about um which i was obviously i've just planted mine in the garden so i hope it looks as good as the ones that we saw there and the um, most prevalent thing at the garden show um was boxes on wheels boxes on wheels everywhere it was hilarious now i know this from the melvin show as well i know this is something people do you bring your box on wheels and you fill it with plants and they have a plant creche so that you can fill your box go and take them to the creche and they'll look after them till the end of the day go back with your box and fill up a bit more um so we were kind of laughing about this and um, all the people wheeling them along and uh, and then my auntie went and bought one <laughs> so there we are converted um i already have like a quite um industrial looking one from um mom that i use for the allotment but um next time we go to a garden show we need to be part of that crowd and, and bring our boxes on walls uh we got a goodie bag um so we just happened to be picnicking um near where the goodie bag stand was we didn't know we just suddenly saw this queue start forming so i guess they've just opened and um you see a queue get in the queue because who knows what you might find so my cousin and i did and, and we got our little goodie bags that had kind of because it's the good food show as well so there was foodie bits in it well there's mostly foodie bits in it there was nothing really gardeny in it and so i guess the last couple of things were um there's the plant village um where you're selling all the plants uh, the prices actually seemed higher in the plant village than they were in the marquee which seemed strange um and we uh, we had kind of walked in through that bit at the very beginning and then got sort of caught up in all the rest and um, it was only sort of at the end, as we were planning to go to the pub, that we were like, oh God, we didn't do the plant village properly. So we had a quick whip around, but I think we were pretty exhausted by that point. Um, and in terms of in the hall, um, I, I don't think we probably, properly saw the um, houseplant area. My mum kept saying, we've not seen the houseplants yet. And um, yeah, I think we missed that. I think we probably missed quite a bit to be honest we really tried to get everything in um, obviously it's the first time we've been so you need to get your bearings and it took us a little while to do that we weren't really sure where everything was in relation to other stuff you kind of got the marquee but how things came off of the marquee and then obviously the indoor area as well um we did have, have a i have a funny anecdote of that my cousin and I, we were by sue kent's border uh, which was lovely and um we just heard one of the talks, I think it was Danny's talk, and we're kind of looking vaguely around like this, in part because we'd already lost the moms, we lost them several times over the day. Um, and also because we couldn't work out where the show gardens were, because we'd been in the marquee, but obviously come out another entrance and, and kind of the show gardens were between the entrances that we had used and 
so we couldn't quite figure out in our minds where these should despite having a map in the book um and so then Sue Kent just kind of appears at our side and said uh, are you lost <laughs> But it gave us an opportunity to have a lovely conversation with Sue Kent and praise her her lovely border. And, uh, and she was so lovely and she was telling us all the things that we must go and see and um, and yeah, the sorts of things that we're about and to take note of. So, so that was lovely that we had that interaction with her. But yeah, mostly we were just like asking for directions. <laughs> um. But yeah, that was our that was our main celebrity encounter with with Sue, and we love Sue, so that was good. <laughs> okay, so I've been I've been chatting about this for way too long, but perhaps that has um, spoken spoke to my enthusiasm for the show. We really enjoyed it. We definitely want to go back next year. Um, I I I am very aware of and mostly on board with a lot of the arguments around these garden shows and what some of the failings of them are. The NEC um, had made, and uh, well, the Gardens World had made a, a sustainability sort of um, uh, commitment for, for the show. Um, I saw that in some places, less in others. There were a lot of plastic bags about, which just seems like a no brainer to kind of get rid of that. Um, but yeah, we had a thoroughly good time. Um, it's lovely that it's fairly local to us. And I would highly recommend if you want a good day out, Gardeners World Live. I never lost the dog again. Dory? Dory? She is actually on my plot and she looks so cute. Oh no, she's moved now. You moved her, Dory. I was trying to capture you. You were overlooking the progress on the pond, weren't you? Yeah? What's your verdict? What? what? Is uh, my nephew doing a good job? He has dug a bit more. She was standing just there. <laughs> All uh all enveloped by the greenery, weren't you? That's our wild area. We need more, Dory. We need a, we need a wild border all along the garden uh, allotment. Well, while I'm out of my chair, I might as well show you some new additions to the plot um, since our last tour. Oh! <laughs> Will I ever not be falling over on this plot? Yeah, you stay there, Dory. Um, so one of the things that's... Uh, is the Phacelia cover crop. I'm <laughs> pretty sure everybody must think I'm um, completely obsessed with the Phacelia now. It's in so many of the titles of my videos I was noticing. Um, but I love it. It was at the it was at the show as well. There were seeds that you could buy. And actually, damn it, I meant to buy the field beans. Forgot about that. Um, as I say, at the end, we were just super rushed because we were like, oh, we haven't seen this. Oh, we haven't seen this. And everything was kind of closing. Um, so yeah, Facelia is coming up, it's coming up here as well. There's one in the middle of those potatoes, which have started flowering. So these are the Desiree, I think. Um, but I wanted to show you the ones flowering down here, because these are the salad blue. Oh, I hope the picture picks this up. Gorgeous. It's such a gorgeous colour. Oh, hello. What are you excited about? So the beans are starting to come up, but they're not, <laughs> they're not finding the bamboo canes yet. Come on, this is where you're meant to be growing. Up, oh, Dory! My goodness. And the other new addition is these three pallet collar beds. Um, so these were gifted by Mel, um, who's the old chap on the plot opposite mine. He actually gave them Mark and then Mark gave them to me because he didn't want them. They are a bit broken, a bit worse for wear, but I filled them with compost and I planted um, Swede in this one, carrots in these two, which are just starting to come up. And this one, yeah, we've got a few just coming up there. So these need watering and I've been down 
fairly regularly over the last few days to come down and water particularly these beds and also my little seed bed one that I made out of the slate tiles which has um, rhubarb beetroot in it there we go so the beetroot are actually coming up pretty well that's good kale's still looking good and um, yeah cosmos just growing everywhere which I am fine with so I can always uh, chop them down if it gets too much I guess um, what was the other thing I wanted to show you oh yes I remember this is, this is exciting so the Saskatoon and the Jostaberry that I brought over from Jim's plot onto mine um, and didn't have much hope for it, especially in terms of fruiting um, but even living um, yeah I have fruits so the Jostaberry in particular has loads of fruits on and I've tried them let's find a nice ripe one these two look good there we go so that's what a Jostaberry looks like so it does look very um, gooseberry Ooh, gooseberry like they taste pretty gooseberry like as well oh I've just brushed my teeth probably not good so yeah, like a gooseberry, they're a little bit sour, but in a good way. I like sour things. Mmm. 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 Lovely. It definitely has that cross between a gooseberry and a blackcurrant. Yeah, super pleased with that. And then the Saskatoon also has tons of berries on. Look at them all. On these ones, are they ripe? Let's feel them. Mm, they still feel quite hard. I'm not really sure how they're they're going to ripen up because yeah, I would say that's the more stressed plant. But that's the biggest Saskatoon. Um, the ones um, that I put with the, the sort of um, whips, um, they're looking less good. Certainly don't have fruits on. Look mostly dead. That wasn't the just a berry. <laughs> some of my hair had got in them now. Um, yeah, there's some. Some of them have got a bit of green leaf on. Most of them look really crunchy. Oh, there we go. That one actually has berries on, but then also crispy leaves. Hmm. What's she got it getting up to? What have you got? Oh, you've got a dirty beard. I'm not sure what you're eating other than dried grass. All right, go mad. Um, oh, I know. Um, one more thing I'll show you. I will, I, I will wrap this up and tell you what I actually bought at the show because I realise I've not done that. Um, but the goji berry, do you remember I said this was one I um, dug up from the home garden um, that was like had come off the main plant? and put in here and then it just looked dead well it looks great now there you go pretty good yes so talking of weird um edibles that's what i bought at the show so i did buy from jurassic plants um and what I got, which was my bargain for £12, um, was uh, not one, but two kiwi plants. They're um, red kiwis, what do they call, mini, mini something, red kiwi, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and the reason um, I had two is because you need a male and a female, which I had read about online, so this had been in my basket on the in the online shop, um, but then I hadn't done it. And um, I particularly wanted to do it last month because they were doing a deal where um, if you bought, I think it was 20 quid of plants, you got a hardy lemon seedling um, free. So that was, you know, I fell for that offer. Um, well, I didn't because I never bought it in the end. So I was chatting away to her about the fact that I had already got a basket full of stuff and that this kiwi was in there. And, um, and she gave me a wink and put the hardy lemon into the bag so again you know you can 
you get some good deals at the uh, floral marquee. So I got my hardy lemon, um, but I also got these kiwis. I'm not sure where they're going to go. Talked to her extensively about how they should be looked after. Um, again, you get to talk to people properly. And she was like, um, if there's ever an edible that you want and it looks like it's not on the website or anything, drop us an email. We might be able to source it or we might have it and we've just not put it on yet and things like that. So, so that was really good. So I bought that. Um, and... The mums all bought their Elstromerias and, and my cousin. And then um, just as we were leaving, there was a bit of, again, a bit of the floral marquee where we were like, we haven't even looked there because it had pond plants. And we'd already said, oh, we haven't seen any pond plants. And then there was this whole area we'd missed. And in that area was um, carnations, dianthus. And I don't grow those. I just don't I don't know why my mom does but she grows them by taking cuttings from um, people who bought her bouquets of flowers I'm just gonna sit back down my arm was hurting then um, so yeah she ta she takes cuttings and we've got a bit of the shed in the shot there there we go and um, and grows them and they always look great and obviously carnations are lovely I love a bunch of carnations but I have not grown them and the display that they had it was the color of them um there was this one called purple damascus and i'm going to put it on screen it does not do it justice it makes it look pink in the picture but it wasn't it was this um sort of antique lace purple like that's what i would imagine it would be antique lace and it's this purple that's dusky and smoky just I kept saying antique -y. that's how it felt to me it was just the most gorgeous color um and I wanted it so it was you got four plants for a tenner and um so I'm looking on the thing and it wasn't there and I'm like there was another Damascus one I can't remember what that one was called so I kind of picking that one up and I'm like mm, I really wanted the one on the display and the man's like I have two in the back so again good to talk to people so he brought me one of those so I had I'd picked that one the purple damascus one and then there was another one that was like this greeny pinky one um called something that i'll put on the screen and um and there was another one that was so very similar called wow but i went for the one that was on the display um and then i got a pinky one i think as well um as my four unfortunately when i got home i realized that the chap had put the two purple damascus in and not the other purple one so i haven't I would have liked four different ones, but being that the purple Damascus was the plant that actually made me want to buy them in the first place, that I have two of those is no bad thing. And I'm quite happy. So, um, so yes, that was the other thing that I bought. Um, I can't just try to think anything else. My cousin bought some teas because obviously, again, the good food shows there as well. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that's all we we bought in terms of plants so we didn't really need a rolly along box on wheels trolley thing um because we didn't go mad definitely think we could have gone madder i was a bit um because my cousin the enabler um i enabled her to buy that alstroemeria because she was dithering about about <laughs> about it um but she she wasn't enabling me enough i could definitely have bought more um i yeah i felt like my mom in particular she tries to rein me in so um, but uh yeah i can imagine if you if you went and you like set yourself a budget or something just go for it um but we were there mostly just to look and enjoy and have a day out and not necessarily to buy loads of stuff and um and we got lots of inspiration definitely got a list of kind of things that we might look out for later um and yeah just thoroughly enjoyed it anyway i've already said that let me finish this video because i'm just nattering on um so this will go out um hopefully in the weekend if i can edit it and if youtube will let me upload it i'm sorry that last week's episode had to be um published in two parts just it would not let me upload the whole video so hopefully that bug has been fixed and and this goes up easily today and then um we'll have a video as usual next week tomatoes i am saving my tomatoes they look sad, <laughs> really.
really sad. Plus there are hundreds of them. No, they're not. There is about 65 of them. Um, but I'm doing stuff with my tomatoes. So that's next week's episode. And I'm now on annual leave, as I said at the beginning of the video, for a whole week. Loads of stuff is going to get done. Um, I'm going to take you along with some of it. But also I can imagine me filming like hours and hours of footage <laughs> doing every single thing this week, which I don't want to inflict upon you so I might do a highlights reel um, at the kind of the end of the week and show you all the bits that I've done and uh, hopefully it will mean brassicas out onto the plot hopefully it will mean pumpkins out onto the plot um, the weather is changing so um, it's already a little bit more mild today I have to, had to put a shirt on to keep warm and um, would you rain oh would you rain I had so at the end of uh, last week's video the rain came with the thunderstorm but it was pathetic yeah barely touched the ground um so we're still absolutely desperate for rain but um it looks like there's several days where we're going to have showers so hopefully that kind of rain you know short bursts but continual over a long period of time will help that water soak right into the soil <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for anyway um okay I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed my reflections on my oh, second only garden show and first one with show gardens. Um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. As I said, we all did. Um, yeah, thumbs up to Gardeners Wildlife.